Hello guys, welcome back to Rajas Mecha, it's Marco here, and after all the clean painting of the last weeks, it's time to go back into the grim dark. In my mind, the grimdark style is all about being faithful to the great illustrations of the 90s and the early 2000 era of 40k. That was my first exposure to the Warhammer aesthetic, both fantasy and sci-fi, and those crazy artworks left such a mark in my mind that even after years I'm still obsessed in trying to translate that vibe into physical models. Heavy weathering and an overload of textures and visual information are the staple of the style, but recently I realized that I want to extend the storytelling outside the model, to deliver the idea that the miniature and the slice of environment caught on its base is jumping out from those inspiring illustrations, with all their dramatic lights and shadows. In a diorama I can use the backdrop to encapsulate the information about the surroundings, but in a model on its base I have to render those sensations as they hit and bounce on the character, so it can be like a proper cutout from a picture. The general concept here is to paint light using colors as light. The iconic 3rd edition cover art by John Blanche is my main reference for this model, but the general idea was triggered by the picture on the box, and this uh, flaming sky in the background, that in a realistic setting should envelop the character, hitting him from every direction. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button to always know what happens on the channel, and if you want to support my work, check my Patreon page, where you can find the real-time footage of my videos, and join the community! Usually I play with the sculpt a bit more in uh, grimdark subjects, but I love this model as it is, so I modified just a couple of details. Always, always drill the hole of gun barrels, even on uh, humble troopers inside the big unit. A black dot of paint doesn't make the same effect. Same thing for the exhaust pipes. Here is even more important because the larger size makes a painted hole even more obvious and a bit ridiculous and I upgraded the chaplain to the Death Watch, to play with different metallic sensations on the shoulder pad and the big inquisitorial symbol on the front wheel. The satin, slightly reflective finish of my Molotov Black is always a great foundation for true metallic schemes. Then a coat of Vallejo metal color dual aluminium. With this coat I don't want to render lights and volumes like in a zenithal black and white, the objective here is to set the metallic nature of the main material. I still try to catch a bit of the basic inside out volumes, pressing the trigger just a bit, so I don't have too much air pushing paint deeply into details and panel lines. If you don't feel confident with uh, your control on the trigger, you can simply lower the pressure on the compressor to obtain the same effect. Again, the idea is to paint light using paint as light, and I tackled the model from the beginning following this idea. The first real color I use on the model is the yellow tone of the general environmental light of the scene. I use it in the main view, hitting the figure perpendicularly, as if he's uh, looking to an alien sun, or a big explosion in the heart of the battle, and I do the same in the back, using the same vector, so I can create a nice contrasting movement of lights and shadows circling around the base. Real light does uh, two main things. It brings uh, tones and colors, and defines the shapes and volumes of an object. I use uh, burnt amber as a darker version of the initial yellow, to start modeling the fake illustrational volumes of the figure, that now catches and bounces light as a little toy soldier. I use inks instead of contrast or golden eye flow paints, because uh, their extreme transparency and glossy finish keep intact all the metallic properties of the first layer. I used burnt amber also to have a bridge color between yellow and magenta. Working with uh, transparency effects and uh, translucent colors, you must always keep in mind the mixing properties of the tones you are going to overlap. If you mix uh, yellow and magenta, and here they will optically mix in the transparent layering, you get a bright red that naturally flows into the two, without creating too much contrast. With that simple step I create a better separation and a more drastic shift into colder tones. The cool tones of my general contrast and at the same time the darker tones of my volume modulation move to the blue side first with turquoise, then with a deep Prussian blue. A 
At the end I spray a bit of light silver in the spots where the light hits with the maximum intensity, like I would do using a bit of white at the end, painting with non-metallic colors. The chromatic and volumetric part of the underpainting is done, and I can move to the black color that will envelop and fuse this whole block of visual information. I use a gold and high flow shading grey, that as you can see here on the label is a transparent and quite glossy black. Still, I want to play safe here, so I increase its translucency adding a good amount of airbrush thinner, so I can work with multiple layers and have a better control over its covering power on the underpainting. You can use a contrast black templar or basilicanum grey if you want to tone down a bit the shine with their more matte finish. Black ink if you want to enhance the metallic shimmer, or something like Tamiya Clear Smoke for a real boost to the glossiness. The result with the color I'm using will have a good balance in the middle of the spectrum, keeping everything in the range of shine of a realistic polished metal. I really hope the camera can catch the richness of this black in all this uh, darkness and general shine. With the base for the armor in place, I need to start separating the other elements from all this uh, black metallic shine, so I move to the wet palette to work on the midtones of everything else. I'll cover it in heavy weathering and environmental light, but this is a great color to paint realistic tires, and I always have a little stash in my drawer. To break the scheme on multiple levels and add more types of contrast, I use uh, models of paints to base leather and bones. They are crazily matte, so all these elements will show the different materials they are made of from the very beginning. Sadly, this is something I always lose in the pictures, but at the end the most important thing is that the models are interesting to see and move around in person, and this extra level of contrast in the look of different materials will make a huge difference. I base all the metallic elements with a simple neutral silver. I use a mix of Vallejo Dura Aluminium and Scale 75 Trash Metal to get the best properties from each one, high coverage from Scale and a stable fluidity from Dura Aluminium. And I use Contrast Agaros Dunes to turn the silver into a matte dull bronze. Again, I play with the finish of the materials to add extra subtle visual interest. I want the trims to frame the shiny black armor with a crusty old bronze, later covered in bluish verdigris, another great way to separate the elements even farther and add the sensation of depth. And I use again transparency to add a more powerful yellow note only to the bronze elements facing the main warm lights. I paint the base with Molotov and Chimera brown and orange tones to maximize the matte finish and the high saturation of the alien rust desert I imagine for the setting. Now I have all the basic colors I need for the scheme, but they are all super flat and from the point of view of textures and fine dimensionality quite boring. So, painting lights and highlights, I use uh, thick paints and different grids of stippling and cross etching brush strokes. I want the helmet, skulls, and all the bone elements to be super dry, rough, and gritty, and I render the effect using uh, short brush strokes and undiluted paint. But the black armor is what is in real need of extra textural movement. I put on a dry palette scale 75 black metal, black and Prussian blue ink, and I use various grades of black metallic paint that I apply with a fine stippling over every panel of the black armor. Paint here is thinned down to flow well from the brush and create small lines and dots, but not too much, because I want the dimensionality of the paint to add also extra real movement to the optical movement. Plus, all these little volumes will make wonders later, interacting with the weathering and retaining extra pigments. With this step I don't build only movement, but also a subtle modulation towards the warm light. 
I use a lighter silver with brown and yellow ink and even a proper bronze to mix lighter metallic tones, introducing the warm yellow sensations of my main light source. Like talking about a glaze, this is one of those steps easier to understand when you see the end results. Time for the fun part, weathering and oil paints. This is not the usual quick and dirty oil wash, and this time I'm going to use more tones in layer steps, different consistencies and even different thinners and finishes, to show you how much you can do with oils, weathering and environmental physical elements. I don't varnish the model, because I don't want to lose the complex game of finishes I created until this point, plus the acrylic layer is not chemically affected by oils and their solvents. I start with Oxide Patina, a light orangey brown extremely diluted with standard white spirit. I apply it very loosely and with a random brush strokes on the whole model, to create the sensation of a fine general warm dust, able to influence all the colors but in a very subtle way. You can consider this as the mid-tone of my weathering. and I clean it immediately after the application. Makeup sponges are the best tool for this step, because they can quickly cover large areas, being very delicate on the surface and the paint I'm moving. More than cleaning, here I'm blending the liquid oily film on the surface, creating a first subtle layer of color and a good oily base where to apply the next tones. Next is the ivory tone of dust. The mix here is a bit thicker, and I apply it only in the highest parts, to build a sensation of a super light dust that separates from the red sand sticking everywhere, but showing only on the upper elements that are not affected by the heavier stuff. And again, I blend it and remove the excess immediately, but being a bit less heavy-handed. The mix of uh, thicker paint and more delicate blending makes this tone uh, stick a bit more on the model. Then I apply engine grease, in a very thick form on all the mechanical parts of engine and exhaust pipes. Here I want the greasy nature of oil paint to create a thick, greasy layer. And the beauty of this particular color is that it's made to keep a strong wet glossiness even when it's dry, selling the effect in a super realistic way. For these uh, same reasons, the blending of this layer will be very gentle and localized, and aim to pushing the paint inside details, lines and crevices. Now I can move to light rust, to create the heavy layer of alien red dust coming from the ground, and here I use the matte effect thinner. The mix is a balance between fluidity to enter well in every detail and line, and thickness to stick to all the flat surfaces. I apply this layer only on the lower quarter of the model, to give the idea of its weight and I insist a bit more on the tires and their closest areas, that constantly heat and move the dusty ground. I control the movement of this layer with Q-tips and brush strokes, using only an up and down motion, that will automatically create realistic streaks and gravity lines.
The last one I apply is the Verdigris effect on the bronze elements, mixed again with the Mud Thinner to completely kill its shine and create a crusty, dry final effect. After this uh, general step, I come back with the same tones with a more controlled application in the small scale. The idea is to precisely model the lines and details, making them super sharp, even in the visual overload of this weathering. I create a finer definition using all the previous tones, working on panel lines and the border of every detail, and at the same time I fix uh, what I don't like or doesn't work visually from the previous steps. With oil paints I don't have to worry about time, and I can go back and forth all the times I need. The oil layer is uh, quite thick in few places, but I have my secret weapon to speed up the process. 20-30 minutes in my trusty drying box and I can quickly go back to acrylics. When the oily component is dry, oil paint is crazily resistant and its surface can support water-based paints without any problem. Grim Dark is not an excuse to be lazy on definition. So the last step is about edge highlights, little details, cuts, lines and general refinement. I know, I skipped the work on the OSLs, but you saw me doing that stuff dozens of times. If you're new to the channel, check my old videos, because you can find OSL effects almost everywhere. What's really important here are the tones on the palette and where I apply them. All the details and edges facing the warm light are painted with the warm tones in the orange-yellow spectrum, while I use a light gradation of blue for the sharp elements facing the cold shadows. This will complete the internal coherency of temperature set from the beginning with inks, making the contrast powerful but uniform and realistic in every layer. Ooh, and one last cool thing before the end. You know that I love heavy body acrylics, and AK Interactive made heavy body metallic paints. They are great to create little dimensional shiny elements. Their pigments are a bit too large for my taste, but they work well for strong points of metallic glare. And here is the final result. It's been a while since my last uh, grimdark model, and if you check the previous videos of the series you can see the evolution of my take on the subject. I realize that uh, I don't have to give up colors and saturation, just move them outside the model and let the external information coming from the environment to create the epic theatrical vibe of the artworks, and I can stop thinking how well this can work on an army scale. Uh, what a temptation! If you like this video give it a like and subscribe, remember that you can ask me anything down below with a comment and you can follow my projects during the week using one of my socials, and if you want to support the channel and my work check my patreon page and join the community, or maybe ask for a commission, see you next week guys!